D2O is a vacuum tube musical instrument amplifier. Um, it sounds really good on guitar and bass and probably instruments I haven't even plugged into it yet. You know, 32 watts, but for guitar at least it's pretty loud. If you hook it up to an efficient speaker, you really should be able to move some air and hold your own in just about any kind of band situation you'll find yourself in. Oh, so this thing's like on two. <laughs> So, uh, can we do this? Absolutely. All right. I'm not going to go all the way up because I think that's crazy, but this is uh, clean. This is just on everything flat. <laughs> Desired effect. It also has a switch. You can switch it to 8 watts, which allows you to get the sound of pushing the tubes harder at lower volumes. I prefer low body jams to record with because if it has 22 watts it's going to shake the whole building to get a decent you know, aggressive tone to it so that 8 watts works much better for me. Classic! <laughs> what I like is uh. I like it if you play quiet, it's clean, and if you lean into it, it's loud, you know? And yeah. I think I just got that, although it may be too early to have that right now. <laughs> I like to keep things as simple as possible, so I really like the way that this breaks up. Um, there's a lot of times that I will just, I will find like my tube screamer or uh, whatever distortion pedal I'm using, I'll find a good level on that and I will keep that on for an entire song uh, because I appreciate the breakup. And, uh, with this, I can feel like I can just dial it in and leave it. I would probably just use this and a tuning pedal. On the technical side of things, there are some aspects of this amp that make it a little different and give it its own personality. Uh, the preamp tubes are these big octal uh, 6SL7 tubes. And you can see they're uh, physically much larger than 12AX7s. 12AX7s, of course, the tubes found in most tube guitar amplifiers. I've described the sound of these guys as being just a little fatter, um, rounder sounding, maybe a little warmer, where the 12AX7 is just a little harsher or brattier. The preamp tubes do use DC heaters, which really helps uh, cut down on the amount of heater hum and noise that you get in the circuit. Most of the circuit is built on a turret board, which is really a bulletproof style of construction. Um, my dad was an electrical engineer back in the early 80s. His company did some work for NASA, and even though they had printed circuit boards at the time, NASA was still specifying turret boards. And the reason is because they were shooting stuff up in space and they didn't want it to break. I mean, I kind of like it wherever I've got it set, basically. Every spot sounds pretty, pretty good.
It sounds great. I can't, it doesn't sound like any particular amp, other amp that I can think of. As far as having an EQ, the EQ is, seems flexible enough that you can do a lot of different things with it. So. huge. sometimes um, but I just sort of embrace it I guess I don't know I like the way it sounds to this I have sort of a scooped sound going here sort of sort of capitalizing on the bassiness of the guitar um, <laughs> I don't, I don't ever turn the volume down. Everything is always up all the time. So I want it to be, you know, able to be sort of quiet if I, you know. Not quiet, but cleaner. But if I lean into it, it really overdrives in a, in a really pleasant way. Transformers are made by a company in New Mexico, uh, Edcore, and they're giant, uh, overspecced iron core transformers that are intended for hi-fi amplifiers. They really help bring across the low end uh, so that the low end doesn't fart out. Some really stiff filtering in the power supply also helps with that. So this being a baritone electrical, uh, I use a V4 through a uh, 412 guitar cab and end up having to sacrifice a lot of my low end. What I like about this is that I get to keep a lot of that. Um, it gives it a more rounded sound uh, because it is a baritone. Um, I really like to have as much of that as possible. I really like the clarity of this, actually, and it's making the B and the E sound actually sort of physically different from my, from the tone that my beloved Deluxe puts out, and it's really cool. It's sort of, it's very clarified. I would probably need to mess around with it, but like, that cuts. And it's, uh... And this doesn't, this doesn't lose either, right? Yeah. So it's not, there's not, I mean, I have, I'm used to a one tone control where it's like, bass goes away and trouble comes in and things. And this is like, no, you can have both. So I designed this amp primarily for guitar, but I think it's turned out to be a really uh, great amp for bass. I had this amp for a while at my house and I had my own 15. and. Um, it sounded really, really good, and I play bass in a band that's kind of quiet, but I still use a pretty just overdriven bass sound for it, and it was, it was perfect for that. Last but not least, of course, this amp uh, just doesn't look like anything else out there.
I mean, I do love how it looks. I love this back, uh, backlit area and the uh, color combination. It's always very important to me. <laughs> One thing I found that is uh, really interesting to me is I've shown this amp to a lot of different people and they've all played it and the things that they say to me about the amp are all really different, the, the way that they describe the amplifier. Um, I think that what's going on here is that really they're telling me about who they are as a player more than they're really telling me about the amp. The words that they use to describe the amp tend to be the things that are important to them to have in an amplifier and um, reflect the way that they think about their playing. I think the really gratifying part is that this amp is able to deliver that for them, whatever it is. That it works for such a diverse group of people I think is really cool. I like it. I like it. It's a good machine.